Chocolate should be only for the bunny. You should do like uh, spring pastries, pastry creams, glazed fruit. It's the return of lighter desserts, but still kind of heavy because we're not quite in the summer. So we're not doing like sorbet and shit like that. You know? That's if you're, I mean, you know, if, you know, can't really have an event this year. Usually I try to give advice for people that are trying to have events, that are trying to escape the drudgery and dreariness of their horrific lives. So I tell them what to cook and what to drink. But they can't do that this year. They have to just live in the horror that they've built for themselves. You know, this quarantine really makes you think. It makes you realize that the most important thing in the world is to have a lot of money. Lots and lots and lots of money. Love is meaningless, and your family and your friends in many cases are obstacles to, to truly what you can do. You have to throw those people away as quickly as possible. Push them in front of trains, push them out the window of a high-rise apartment building, smother them with pillows in your sleep. They want you to fail. They don't want you to do better than they did. This means your parents and everyone near you. You have to get away from them. You should only keep friends for 24 months. At that point, you've gotten everything you can from them, and you should throw them away. Act like you don't know who they are. Push them in front of a train, out of a high-rise apartment building, smother them in their sleep, throw a hairdryer in the tub. Doesn't matter whether those are metaphorical suggestions or real ones, or it is up to you to decide. You need to be a stick-and-move hustler. Keep going. Keep fighting. Don't get stuck in a bad situation, whether it's a job, whether it's a relationship, or whether it's a family unit. Nothing matters. Get away from these people. Trust me, they're trying to kill you. You just don't see it. Don't fall for hucksters, the Gary V's of the world. They tell you that you're going to start your business and you're going to be this brilliant, innovative person. Don't do that. Get a simple job and steal. Get a simple job and learn the way around it. Learn how to steal. Stealing is so important. Steal. Take. Take. Pad your pocket with the extras. Find a way to circumvent the system. Little crimes are very important when it comes to survival. These are things you're all going to need to learn how to do. Okay? Even if it's just stealing ketchup. One day it's ketchup, next day it's someone's pension. Be smart. Play the long game. If I could do it all over again, I wouldn't have gone near comedy, this circus tent freak show. I would have been in good shape. I would have stayed thin, and I would have done like, uh, you know what Matt Damon did in Talented Mr. Ripley. I would have just stealing someone's identity, murdered them, and tried to become them. That is also a great strategy for success. Murder someone and become them. You don't hear that often. You don't hear that. You usually hear like, go to grad school. That's not helping. That's not helping. If you want big gains, you have to take big risks. Okay? Get comfortable with death. Murder, extortion, blackmail, violence, corruption, betrayal. These are all things that you'll need to get very comfortable at to succeed in America. Imagine a priest giving this Easter sermon to people. Like, wouldn't it be great if a priest was giving this sermon? It's like a bunch of ladies with big hats. They're all nodding. Like fanning themselves. Yeah, they're like fanning themselves in a big southern church. He's like, the first thing y'all need to do is understand that you got to apply pressure to the right people. Understand that secrets are power. And leverage is necessary to get what you want. And all the ladies are like, yes, praise Jesus. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. What's a joke and what's not, it's up to you to decipher, folks. It's really not my business. I, I just offer you what I can offer you. And I'm just telling you that the quarantine makes you think about things. How, how, how truly blessed we are to have this uh, moment right before the world descends into chaos and Violence. I mean, in five years, the idea of something being true or not will be funny. Yeah. The idea of truth will only be laughable because we will have gone, we will have descended by that point into a collective state of madness. Truly. The future of this country is a permanent state of schizophrenia brought on by the media, an endless assault of technology, narcissistic personalities injecting 
their opinions into everything, you will fall victim and prey to the monsters that are coming to eat whatever is left of this decayed system. You have no choice. Right or wrong in terms of like true or not true, what's real news and fake news, if somebody even suggests that, you'll just start to laugh maniacally like Joker. Pretty soon, we're heading there pretty quickly. There will be no value to truth in the future. There will be a collective split of reality. Some people will live in one, some people will live in another. A lot of people will have one foot in, in each world. I mean, it's, it's gonna splinter. There will be no more one reality. We're heading into, and I'm not trying to sound like an LA you know, Looney Tune, we're heading to a place where people don't really have an interest in realities that don't confirm to their thoughts ideas, opinions, beliefs, they want to live in their own reality. Some people are going to live in their own reality. And your reality is going to come with your own media, your own figures, your own gods, your own deities, your own myths. You know, it's going to come with all of these things. It's going to be prepackaged and sold to you. And you're no longer going to need any objectivity because it won't exist. Your reality is going to come fully fleshed out, just waiting for you to absorb it and become it wholly, totally completely. There will be no more compromise. There will be no more truth, no more objectivity. There will only be the fucking darkness that you'll live in for the rest of your days <laughs> until your physical body decides to quit. Another fun thing on Easter is a quiche. <laughs> like uh, if you do a, a, a ham and cheese or a quiche Lorraine, you could do one with uh, vegetables and or something like that because they are that is kind of a fun appetizer. Enjoy the holiday. <laughs>